Okay, so I've got a PS3 RetroBat setup guide for you today. I last uploaded this a couple of months ago, but there has been some changes, and I just want to make you aware of it. So if you have set it up and you're happy with it, just continue to watch this video because there might be bits and pieces you didn't know about. Uh, for people brand new to it, then check this out. <laughs> Okay then, so first things first, what we're going to need to do is download firmware and that acts as a BIOS for RetroBat to read. Links in my description as always. So just go and download the PS3 update and this is, like I say, the firmware. If you're using Edge like I am for this, then just keep it and that will download and keep anyway. And whilst we're waiting for that one to download, what I'm going to do next is show you compatibility. Now, PS3 games emulation-wise are getting very good nowadays. Uh, a few years ago, it would barely run a few games, but nowadays we have got lots and lots to play. So first thing you need to look at, if you want to play the game all the way through, so 100% playability, then the tab here, Playable, is going to show you all the games which are like I say, 100% playable, and these are going to cause new crashes. Uh, some of them might need some minor adjustments to make them a bit more playable if you get lighting issues, but I'll go on to that later on in this video. So what I'm going to do is use my game I always use for these setup guides. I covered this on Launchbox and Batacera, that's an RPCS3 emulator. So I've got 007 Legends in under the RPCS3 compatibility list. Uh, 007 Legends is actually located here and it's deemed as playable, which it is. So you've got icons as well. So round circle here, obviously that supports the disc version of 007 Legends. And the PlayStation logo is for digital games. So I've got a copy of 007 Legends, which I extracted with my Blu-ray disc player. And that's that. So let's go and actually go into Retrobat to get the ball rolling with this. So if we go to Retrobat, what we're going to need to do is go to the Retrobat logo and search for RPCS3. And just open that. And it's not installed at the moment, so you'll likely need to use your cursor on your keyboard or your standalone mouse to go to Yes to install. So you should have this pop up. So just check. I have read the quick start guide and do not show again. It also warns you about uh, not condoning piracy. Uh, so like myself, I'm a big PS3 gamer. I love PS3. And I'm going to just go to continue. And straight away, it's going to prompt us for a new update for RPCS3. So it's updated several times a day, literally. So just update it. So that's that done. And it's just going to say to restart. So just restart it. And that's that. So next thing you're going to need to do is we can do this through the Retrobat directory, or you can use this emulator as a standalone. So it's almost like a double setup guide I'm doing. So let's just go to File and install that firmware, which we just downloaded. So File, Install. And now you need to locate where that downloads the PS3 update. So just locate where that PS3 update file is gone. And then just select it and it will start installing the firmware, which is currently 4.90. And you should get this come up then, compiling PPU modules. That's going to take a little bit of time, but don't close it down and let it do a thing. Sometimes it might appear to be stuck, but it's not stuck. It is doing stuff. So just let this be for five minutes or so. Okay, so once that PPU module process is finished, you're pretty much good to go with that part of it. So next thing I'm going to do is just close out of RetroBat altogether and just go to quit. And as you can see here, I've got my 007 Legends game on my desktop. In the file structure of this, how this rips from my disk, it gives you a PS3 underscore game. Inside you've got a few different folders with files inside and so on. And you've also got a single file, SFB file, uh, titled PS3 underscore disk dot SFB. So what we need to do next is actually drag this game into a folder and it's not going to be the ROMs folder this time for PS3. I'm actually going to put this into emulators folder 
And what I'm going to do is just go all the way down until I come to RPCS3. And from here, there's going to be a folder called Games. If you just open Games up, what we're going to do is drag the 007 Legends Europe game I've got into this folder. And I've also got an update file for this one, which is a dot .package, so it will update 007 Legends to the last version of it. So once that's in there, what we're going to do next is head out of here, and we're going to go into the emulator folder again for RPCS3, and RPCS3 to open this up. And as you can see, and mine's already added, but to add your game, what we're going to do is go to File, Add Games, and from here you can locate where you've just dragged and drop your game, which is in the Games folder, and just highlight your Game folder and select, and that's going to have your game pop up inside of RPCS3. Like I said, you can use this emulator as a standalone, or you can use it through Retrobat, so double whammy really for that. What we're going to do next is install the update file. So, like I say, I've got the package file, which is uh, the 007 Legends update, which was last released a few years back, probably longer ago than that. So, to update your games, what we're going to do is check this out first. Under version, it will say update available, and this is requesting 1.01 uh, .01 update. So, what I'm going to do to install the update is go to file. Add packages wraps edats and then just locate your update package file. So let's just double left click on that. Do you want to install this package? Yes and OK. And as we can see, version is now gone to the current version or the last version. Now, in terms of your update files, you need to look at the serial and also the ID number on your update package files so they need to be identical so just bear that in mind okay so next thing we're going to need to do is go to the retrobat gui so you can access this easily by right clicking on the shortcut of retrobat open file location bat gui m3u creator and what i'm going to do next is point this ps3 emulator path to where my game is located and that's in the emulators folder for rpcs3 so just click on the horizontal dots just here and just locate where your game is so in my case it's on c drive and if i scroll down to my retrobat folder i'm going to then go into my emulators folder and then search for rpcs3 and obviously it's in the games folder we just put it into. And I'm going to just highlight this one, my game that is, select folder, scan. And this is what comes up. So under game name, just left click or double left click on this and just type in the title of the game. And that's going to generate the M3U file we need for Retrobat. So generate M3U. And as we can see here, we've now got W7Legends.M3U. So let's just open up Retrobat again. And we now have PS3 up here. And we've also got our game. So let's just go straight into this. And there we go. So the first time round you load your games, it's going to take a little bit of time compiling what's called PPU modules. Similar process to what it was like just a minute ago when we was installing the PS3 emulator. So just bear this in mind. It's going to take a bit of time and just let it run its course. So if you notice at the bottom, it says compiling shaders. So the first time you play your PS3 games, this is what it's going to do. It's going to put all your uh, graphics of your games into a folder. It's almost like a cache folder. So it's grabbing the new I'm ahead of the train graphics. Run. What am I? So classic bit of Goldfinger with Daniel Craig oddly playing Sean Connery. 
But anyways, uh, you can do more from here. So if we go to view options, advanced system options, uh, this bit is going to be a lot more uh, pressing on your hardware. So just make sure if you're going to do what I'm about to do, just make sure your hardware supports it. And uh, RPS3 really needs a decent uh, CPU and a really good graphics card too. So internal resolution is where you can bump these up. Now, let me just give you a tip. Not all games is capable of doing this. So on some games, if you do this, you'll get weird artifacts appearing on the screen and your screen might go a weird color. Now, under game aspect ratio, uh, most games for PS3, if not all of them, was uh, by default set to be in 16 by 9. Of course, the PS3 era was the start of HDMI catching on. And so 4 by 3 ratio was a thing of the past at that point. So by keeping this to auto, 16 by 9 is going to just appear. So just leave that be. And under advanced settings, visual rendering, uh, again, dependent on your hardware specs, if we go to anti-aliasing, uh, yes, put this to yes if you can, or obviously just leave it to auto. Retrobat is going to read this to go to yes, even if you leave this on auto or press yes. So anti-aliasing is going to do what it says. It can uh, fix some visual artifacts in some games. And of course, it might not work on all games. Uh, right color buffers. Now, some games with broken graphics, that type of thing, uh, might require you to put this to on. So just press yes if any of your games do that. Anastrophic filtering is a case of filtering and scaling your games so they look better. So again, if you've got the hardware to support it, then go to 16 times or 8 times or whatever. I'm going to just put mine on 4 times for this. And under screen sync, I'm going to just put this one on to yes. And under drivers, if any of your games doesn't work, then there's a good chance that, say, OpenGL might be required to run some games. Uh, generally, under Auto, it selects Vulkan, and I find this no problem at all for the few games that I run. And your other settings here, things like emulation, uh, some of these options might need to be put onto yes or whatever. In that's a case, I go into the RPC3 Wikipedia and search in your game. There's going to be hints and tips on there how to get your games working if they don't work or they got broken graphics or whatever. So with these settings now applied, I'm going to go back into the game and see how this one runs. And like I say, the second time around, it's loading PPU modules just like that. So it's just a one-time process. <laughs> And as you can see, I've now got a black screen, and that's quite likely because I've been messing around with the settings. So, like I say, in some cases with PS3 games, it's a little bit of trial and error. So I'm going to go to the main catalyst for this, which is normally the case, and just put this internal resolution back to 720p. And let's open this one up again. And there we go. Fixed. So like I say, with PS3 emulation on our PCS3, sometimes you might have to dig in and uh, find how to set specific games up. So the resolution of 1080p might be gone, but we've still got the anti-aliasing on, so and a couple of other video options, so it's still a massive upgrade from the real PS3 hardware. And there we go. And to quit out of this emulator retro bat, I'm just using my PS button and just going to exit. So that's about it on the retro bat side of things. What I'm going to show you next is if we go into the actual emulator itself, like I've been saying throughout this video, we can use this as a standalone emulator if you don't want to run it through retro bat. So you can make a shortcut of this. What we're going to do is just go back to emulators and RPCS3. And the file you need to open up the emulator is the RPCS3 XE. And by all means, create a shortcut of this if you want. So just uh, right click on it, show more options. And I'm going to go to send to desktop. And that's just made us an easy to access way of getting to RPCS3 if you're going to be using this outside of RetroBat. 
And here we go. Now, let me show you a few settings like I was showing you a minute ago, RetroBat. Most things are going to be in your config tab. Now, you've got all your GPU settings. Uh, right color buffers is quite a big one for some games with broken graphics. Uh, we can also set anastrophic filter in here. And we also got auto aliasing, which is also going to be on auto mainly. And you can also upscale the resolution from here. But like I tried a minute ago, as you've seen, some games might give you a black screen, that type of thing. So let's back out of here. And finally, I'm going to just tell you every day, go to the help and go to check for updates. And because I downloaded this just a minute ago, it's not got an update. But guaranteed in a few hours' time, it will have an update. So just bear that in mind. So that's it for my PS3 Retro Bat tutorial. Obviously, hit notifications and also subscribe if you like this. I'm always updating my channel with new Retro Bat guides as well as Batacera, Launchbox, and also Retro Arch. Be sure to check out my membership option, which is fairly new. And I've also got a store now with cool merch in it. And check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.